I make 145,000 Kenyan shillings at the end of the month. But for those guys who are watching from outside the Kenya, that's like $970, okay? Now, that's not the issue. The issue is, is that by 12th of any given month, I'm always broke with this amount of money. And by the way, for those guys who are watching again from outside, let's just break perspective so that I tell you the magnitude of this amount of money per month in Kenya. Do you know what they say in Kenya? According to the Kenya Bureau of Statistics, only 1%, only 1%, are making a salary of 100k and above in this country. That's very sure. Probably you find these guys are actually at zero point in terms of the percentage with respect to the population that we have in our country. Therefore, it means guys who are making this amount of money are regarded as, you know, sort of cream de la cream. That's a fact. So, having that understanding, now let's get into the business. Now, what makes this specific individual get themselves in a situation whereby they are not able to actually save anything? By the way, this is a case scenario of a client who called me, and by the way, with their consent, they told me I can share the information, obviously with the retention of the names and such, okay? Now, for the purposes of sharing this information is to decode that menace that is out there. This is just a single case scenario. It's a representation of what is happening not only in Kenya, but globally in terms of people misusing their salary and then they get themselves to a thing that we call the rat trap okay they all they live from paycheck to paycheck if this guy is actually becoming broke at 12th month then it tells you this individual if he or she was not to get a salary even for a single month this is a crisis in making and whenever you get yourself in this kind of a situation then you're not okay i ask the question then how much are you dedicating in terms of the savings and they told me I do not save nothing because, I mean, I can't. The lifestyle that I'm living, it's actually way expensive. I mean, like everything is going into use. And I said, okay, fine. Would you mind if you go ahead and, you know, break into perspective, like how much you dedicate to where? And let's take uh, the case scenario. The guy is actually dedicating a whooping 30, you know, in terms of the, of the rent. Let's just call it rent. Rent is dedicating 34,000 Kenyan shillings at the end of the month. Well, I know you may ask why. Okay, rent is basically like 30,000 around there. And then the other is actually goes for the utilities, like of the water, electricity, and water view. I'm just going to skim rashly, you know, very fast into these figures. And then we go to what they can actually do or what I told them to do. Now, the other thing is about the transport, what have you. The guy has a car, so he uses the car at the end of the day. And again, this car needs to be fueled. <laughs> Don't forget, this car is on loan. This car actually consumes 1,500 each and every day. That the information I got. Therefore, that means that like 45,000 at the end of the month. All right. The other thing that the guys need to have is what we call, you know, um, you know, car loan. That car loan needs to be paid. Just like I said, it's a car loan. It's actually dedicating a whooping 21,000 Kenyan shillings at the end of the month towards the repayment of that car. I, do not, I didn't even ask what kind of a car is, is that. The other thing is about the black tax. Black tax, if you're Watching this from Africa, you already know what I'm talking about. You know, is that money that usually send to your family members, your mother, your father, your siblings, maybe educating your siblings, your uncles, aunties, and what have you. So that's what we call the black tax. This guy is dedicating a whooping 15,000 Kenyan shillings. I did ask why. And then say, hey, I do have a sister who is actually in university and also some other few siblings out there who are actually schooling and I'm supporting them in one way or the other. Anyway, I just set aside like 15,000 at the end of the month. Okay, fine. We are going on. There, the entertainment actually is taking a whooping 20,000 Kenyan shillings. Now, this 20,000 Kenyan shillings go towards him taking alcohol. He does take alcohol. And again, uh, there is issues of buying clothing for the family, he's taking the family outing and blah, 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 and all those kind of things. So at the end of the day, this amount, you know, results to 135,000 Kenyan shillings. So out of the 45,000, 45, then the guy is remaining with like 10K. And again, the question is, okay, fine, at least there is a 10K hanging somewhere. Are you able to trace this 10K? Yeah, sometimes I do, but uh, hey, guess what? After some few days, then I'll go back, I recoup my, take my 10K, and then I'm done. So anyway, the point is this. Now, what makes this individual to get themselves in such kind of a scenario? If you look at the expenditure, and by the way, by the way, there is a video that I'm about to release about the middle incomers. There is a very big problem with middle incomers. These guys, they usually have themselves quote-unquote, the best life, well, as we perceive them or as they are perceived. Now, at this particular point, you realize this person is suffering from what we call the spender or has what we call the consumer mindset. Perhaps if you've been watching me for quite a long time, I've been talking about something called consumer mindset. This is an individual who has a very high attitude. It's called consumer mindset, consumer 
mindset this is a, these are individuals who has a very or who have a very high you know appetite when it comes to the consumer consumption of money and these individuals usually get themselves in a situation whereby to them whenever they perceive money is ought is a something to be consumed not a tool to make more money off of it now the question is this this individual according to that lifestyle i've actually dedicated or explained there it tells you this individual has or does not have what we call or does not possess something called you know financial literacy financial literacy and then i asked okay fine why are you paying a house rent worth 30000 at the end of the month i asked maybe perhaps you have a big family then how many kids do you have kids what only one just a single kid, him, the wife, and the kid, just three people in that specific way. And then I ask, okay, fine, can't you get a little bit affordable house from that, you know, where you're living? And they say, yeah, I can, but again, I just feel like, hey, um, it is what it is. Okay, fine, how old are you? I am, I'm 27 years old. Wow, at 27 years old, you already have a, a house rent of over 30,000 on top of your head. Then I'm telling you, you're shooting your foot. That's a reality. The fact remains is this. Whenever you actually get yourself in such a lucky, if you're making this amount of money at 27, consider yourself lucky. And this is one of those times that usually knock in your life. And if you do not utilize them better, it's not so good result. Okay? You can get another chance anyway, but, but this is not really the way you're supposed to go about. So the question is this, at this particular case scenario, this is a guy who has the capacity to save even more, even more. By the way, I usually tell people, make sure that at least you save 20% of your salary, 20% of your what? Of your salary. But now the question is this, always consider this. If you do not have the school fees that you're paying, I did ask that question, there were no school fees, the kid is actually young, and then I ask, one thing that I'm supposed to understand, if there are no added extra, in a, you know, sort of, you know, uh, responsibilities like the school fees and what have you, then you should focus towards what, you know, towards you know, uh, what we call uh, saving more so that at least you can secure your future. I did ask a question. Okay, fine. You're telling me you do have a car. Is it a necessity from where you work? Is it that thing that you know, hey, I can't do away without, I must have it? Because there's some of the companies, perhaps where you work, it's a little bit far from where you live, then you have to have a car. Nowadays, car is actually a necessity and you can actually even buy it even before buying a land. But the question is this, at that particular case scenario, is it a necessity? I ask them, okay, fine. Which is this car type of a car is you're actually dedicating 21,000 at the end of the month? And told me, um, let me not, let me not just say the car, okay? Now, the point is this. Because I was actually gazing the type of a car he must be driving based on how much he is about to pay and for how long and all those kind of things. You can actually relate that with the amount of money. Now, the point is this. Now, was it necessary to, okay, if you must have a car, then must it be that what you're having right now? So those are some of the tricky questions that you're supposed to ask yourself. And again, you having a car, what else are you saving from out there? Because, see, any action usually have what we call the reaction. For example, let's say there are two houses here. We have the house. House A and you have the house B or the, the rental house A and the rental house B. The rental house A you can actually go ahead and pay just, just throw some figures out there like 15k a month and then we have the house B where you can actually pay like uh, say 10k or let's say, say 12k per month. But now the question is this. This one obviously maybe let's say this is a 1B and this is a 1B. Both of them are one base, but one is 15 and the other one is what? It's 12K. Now you ask yourself, fine, this one obviously appears affordable compared to this one, but this one has some factors considered to it. Let's say this house is actually located far from your job. And maybe perhaps if you were to live in this house, then it means you have to use at least 200 Kenyan shillings per day for the transport, the 102 and also 100 froth. So then that means you have to consume 200 Kenyan shillings per day. That makes it 6,000 at the end of the month. And then on this end, we have this house which is actually, you know, paying this amount of money. And at the end of the day, then you have to actually pay love something like, let's say, 50 shillings a day or maybe nothing. Okay, so at that particular case, living in a 15,000 house is way much better compared to living to that house. So the same case scenario happens if you buy yourself a car, be it either alone or whichever the car. All right, now the question is this, you ask yourself, okay, fine, if I go ahead and subscribe to this car, I'm going to save this amount of money. But if you're adding up, it's nothing showing up. Like, for example, I ask a question, very simple question. In this case scenario, you have yourself a car, a car that is actually consuming 1,500 a day. Okay, 
So if you're having a car which is consuming 1500 per day, now what are the variables that you're actually saving out of by you using this 1500 per day? Is it convenience? Is it you being there in time? And what does it add you being there in time? You see, you can be in a situation whereby if you are arrive there in time, then it helps you make more and become more productive. Again, I have this car which I'm paying this amount of money. Then maybe perhaps I use this car as an Uber or maybe as a taxi or something of so. So you have to justify why you're having this specific gadget with you that you're actually paying this because for example this guy is actually paying a 21,000 21k monthly for a car and again on top of that there is a 45,000 45,000 sometimes i even feel like my head can actually ache if you did how much is that car taking in a month over 60 what over 66,000 per month if this guy could actually hold a little bit of his dog and actually dedicate this amount of money towards savings can you tell me this guy how much will he be making maybe if you dedicate this amount of money towards something like a money market fund or maybe a treasury bill or the guy just decides to accumulate this money and one day start a business or maybe even acquire an asset you see you'd rather even acquire that asset that is appreciating in value and it, yeah i understand doesn't have a cash flow but 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 again the point is this guy is actually depreciating each and every time you brother dedicate this amount of money you see this type of mathematics and also you know understanding how the numbers works really really matters a lot and i asked him a question okay fine you seem to be okay and comfortable with your life then why did you call and they say hey i realized i'm making a mistake absolutely you are that's for a fact you're supposed to be very careful on where you dedicate your money otherwise if you guys don't understand this you know parameters or metrics you're gonna get yourself into what we call the rat race you know you know a paycheck paycheck or paycheck you have to survive by paycheck by paycheck so it's always good to make sure that at least you understand what you dedicate where fine first of all i don't see the essence of paying over thirty thousand a rent for somebody who has having one kid that's for sure i know you may bring the factors of hey what about security what about sanity and whatever i am telling you there are people who are making way above that amount of money and they are paying half of that rent and I know they are living comfortable. That's a reality and that's a fact. So if you excuse yourself, you see, failures usually have a lot of excuses. Oh, security. Oh, I don't know water. Oh, I... if it means you sacrificing for two or three years and get yourself the financial freedom, then you can live wherever you want. But if you just want to acquire this, you know, a luxury life as early as you can and be happy, be nice, th 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 then that's where we are losing the whole essence or the whole point of understanding what is financial literacy? No wonder why there were the statistics that were released and they were saying, hey, Gen, Gen Z and I don't know, some parts of the millennials are actually projected to be one of the poorest people in the society. So I really hope I'm wrong and I so hope they are, they are wrong actually. I'm actually borrowing that information from that specific area. So anyway, the point is this advocate for the financial literacy. Understand why you're actually possessed, possessing that specific thing. Don't just wake up in the morning and go buy things. Don't just wake up in the morning, go do thing just, just don't don't just wake up in the morning and go do any other thing that is out there just because maybe you seem to have money that can be able to buy that specific thing as of now that's wrong and that's not how we actually use our money anyway guess what guys make sure that at least you hit that subscription button it's actually free doesn't cost you nothing and also like this video and by the way down below there on the description of this specific video pick that number of mine shoot me a call i'm always on the other side of the com, I offer these services at a personal level for just a cup of coffee's price. I also have booklets about investments and business ideas and plans as well for only 280 Kenyan shillings. For now, it's a goodbye. See you in the next one.